Namaskar. Good evening to all. A very warm welcome to all our viewers. Welcome to our 58th session of the Virasat Talk program being organized by the Archaeological Exploration and Excavations Department of the Heritage Society, Patna. I request all our viewers and followers to share the live link of the session with all your friends and colleagues so that we may reach out to more people in our effort to promote and create awareness regarding the rich cultural heritage of our country. Our session will begin very soon. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome our distinguished and eminent speaker, Dr. Bia Mani sir, uh, in our today's session. Uh, Dr. Bia, we have already uh, briefly introduced Dr. Bia Mani sir in the uh, morning session. Uh, however, for those viewers who are joining now, I would like to take a very small time to briefly introduce Dr. Bia Mani sir. Dr. Bia Mani, former di uh, Director General, National Museum and Honorable Vice Chancellor, National Museum Institute, has been a renowned field archaeologist, numismatics, and art critic, who has earlier also served as Additional Director General in the Archaeological Survey of India till April 2015. Uh, he has been an uh, excellent uh, person and a great archaeologist in the Indian history and has greatly contributed in the field, field of ancient Indian history and archaeology. He has received gold medal while he was uh, doing his postgraduate and PhD in Banaras Hindu University, uh, he, where he also in the later taught courses in, in Banaras Hindu University and in the Central Institute of Higher Tibetan Studies from 1978 till 1984, when later he joined Archaeological Survey of India as Deputy Superintending Archaeologist. Since then, he has been involved in conservation of monuments in Maharashtra, Goa, Delhi, and Jammu and Kashmir. He has discovered a large number of archaeological sites in all of these places, besides also in Uttar Pradesh and Haryana during his explorations. He has directed more than 19 excavation projects in the country, some of which are in Lalpur, Delhi, Salimagar, Delhi, uh, Muhammad Nagar, and Harnol, Haryana, Siswania, Sankisa, Ayodhya, Lavya in Uttar Pradesh, and Kanishpur and Ambaran in Jammu and Kashmir. Recently, he re excavated the sites of Kapilavastu, Rajghat, and Sarna during 2013 and 15. He has also excavated an early Harappan site in Kunal in Haryana from 2016 to 2019. He is a member of various national and international organizations in the field and has widely traveled in European, American, and Asian countries in international seminars and conferences. He has published five books and about 200 research papers to his credit. Presently, he is also the vice chairman of the Indian Archaeological Society, New Delhi. It is indeed my great pleasure and honor to welcome you, sir. As a student of archaeology and as, to, as a student of ancient Indian history, it is my honor to welcome you on our piece. And it is indeed our pleasure to hear you, sir, in our today's session. Dr. Bia Mani, sir, will be today speaking on the topic Rama v. Rama Ayodhya Archaeological Excavations in 2003. Without taking much time, I request Dr. Bia Mani, sir, to begin the session. Thank you, sir. Neelam Bujasya Malukomalangam Sita Samaru Pitavama Bhagam Pandu Mahasaya Picharu Chapam Namami Ramam Raghuan Shanath. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, let me thank the Heritage Society Patna uh, and uh, all the organizers for inviting me to give a lecture on Rama Viram Ayodhya. I have given several lectures on uh, archaeological excavations which I carried out in 2003 with my colleagues in Ayodhya. But I have uh, the pleasure to give a PowerPoint presentation today so that uh, the 
evidences uh, recorded in the excavations should be clear to everyone. Let me start uh, uh, my topic, Rama Bhiram Ayodhya, Archaeological Excavations in 2003. Ram appears in sculptural art either in terracotta or in stone from at least late Tihan times, if not earlier. And that was the period when depiction of most of the Brahminical, Buddhist and Jain deities in anthropomorphic form started. However, there are some scenes of Ramayana depicted in terracotta panels, such as one from Koshambi, belonging to the 2nd, 1st century BCE, in which Raman is shown abducting and carrying away Sita, who is throwing her ornaments so that she could be traced by one who finds them, apparently Ram and Lakshmi. A 3rd century CE, terracotta figure of Ram with label inscription of the name from Nachar Kheda in Haryana and now in the Los Angeles County Museum is one of the earliest pieces depicting Rama's portrait, which you can see on the screen. Two more terracotta plaques from Nachar Kheda and one from Jin in Haryana belonging to the 4th century CE and two of them with legends in the Brahmi script of Gupta period depict three different scenes from Ramayana, Ram, Lakshman, Sita meeting Jatayu, Golden Deer, Marichi and Panchavati along with Lakshman and Sita and Hanuman destroying Ashok Vatika in Lanka. Such an antiquity of uh, scenes from Raman in stone are depicted from 3rd century CE to the modern times at many places, including Nagarjuni Pond in the 3rd century CE, Nasna Kutra uh, Temple, 5th century CE, Patadkal and Elora, 7th, 8th century CE. Similarly, in almost every Indian school of miniature paintings, scenes from the life of Ram were painted in rich artistic style of execution. In the Southeast Asia also, Raman scenes are depicted, particularly in sculptural art at Angkor Wat in Cambodia and at Prambanam in Indonesia. Archaeological evidence from sites connected with the life of Ram have been discussed by many scholars and archaeologists. Many such sites have been excavated also. Archaeological Survey of India had planned a field project called Archaeology of the Ramayana Sites in late 1970s and early 1980s. Besides Ayodhya, the sites of Sringavirpur, Bharadwaj Ashram, Chitrakut and Nandigram were included in the project. The site of Bharadwaj Ashram had provided evidence of battle and dog structure and no proof of a regular settlement. It has yielded shirts of northern black polished wear, uh, now onwards we will call it NBPW, which is a common ceramic found at all other sites of the project. The evidence of this pottery going back to the mid second millennium BCE from the latest excavations at Ayodhya under my direction by the Archaeological Survey of India in the field season 2002-03 has opened a new chapter in finding a clue to determine the time nearer to the life of Ram. The site of Ayodhya is known as uh, has been known as disputed area of Ram Jan Bhumi Babri Masjid and it is uh, located in district Faizabad in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, there are references of Ayodhya uh, uh, site in Ayodhya Mahatme of Skandapuran, Ayodhya Mahatme of Rudra Yamal, 
Satyopakhyan and Avadh Vilas of Lal Das. Ayodhya matter on Ram Janbhumi Babri Masjid had been continuing from the time of Kingdom of Avadh and the rulers of East India Company for more than 150 years. The issue revolves around the control of a site traditionally regarded among the Hindus to be the birthplace of Lord Ram, where a temple existed which was allegedly demolished in the time of Babur and a mosque was constructed. Since then, a number of riots took place at the site to gain the control. Excavations beyond the disputed site in Ayodhya at different localities were undertaken by a team of VHU led by Ekinarayan in 1969-70 and later by Archaeological Survey of India under the Raman National Project between 1975 and 1986 by Bibilal and K.N. Dikshi. The mosque, which was known as Babri Masjid, was demolished during a rally on 6th December 1992. On the instructions of the Allahabad High Court's Lucknow Bench, ASI placed the order of ground penetrating radar survey, that is GPR survey, to a private company, Tojo Vikas International Private Limited, which conducted the GPR survey from 30th December 2002 to 17th January 2003 and submitted its report on 17th February 2003. The court, however, considered that the anomalies and results of GPR survey should be confirmed by systematic ground truthing such as provided by archaeological trenching. And therefore, the High Court on 5th March 2003 in the matter of OOS number 4 of 1989, that is Sunni Central Board of Works and others versus Gopal Singh Visharat, now deceased, and uh, others gave orders to ASI to excavate the 2.77 acres of disputed site to find out archaeological evidence for deciding the issue, whether there was any temple structure which was demolished and mosque was constructed on the disputed site. On Friday, the 7th March 2003, at about 6 p.m., Gauri Chatterjee, the then Director General of ASI, called a meeting and decided that uh, myself, as SA ASI headquarters, would head a 14-member uh, team and start excavations in Ayodhya. Subsequently, the order was issued on 8th March 2003, which was addressed to OSD RJB BM Lucknow in this regard. The team reached Ayodhya and discussions were held with the Divisional Commissioner RM Srivastava on 9th March 2003. As the team leader, I informed the OSD Ramjan Bhumi Babri Masjid on 10th March 2003, our intention to start excavations on 12th March 2003 and to inform the concerned parties as desired by Honorable High Court. Initially, the High Court had asked one month for excavation and subsequent uh, 15 days for submission of report. But the period of excavation was extended by it from time to time later on till August 2003. In the last week of May 2003, Hari Manji, the then director of antiquity, was made a second team leader. But he, he only looked after the court matters and the excavation work was continued to be fully directed by me. 
even the final report which was submitted on 22nd august 2003 was written by me with support of uh, my colleagues in uh, 10 chapters and hari manji had no role to play in it it was an unprecedented work with the objective fixed by the high court as mentioned earlier the excavations were undertaken however it was further emphasized to establish a complete cultural sequence and antiquity of the site special care was undertaken in layout and numbering of trenches the area restrictions as ordered by the high court were followed the work was monitored by two additional district judges on daily basis with observers of all the parties and their advocates involved in the case under strict vigil of police and intelligence agencies the entire proceedings of excavations and recording of structures and antiquities were documented by still and video cameras as per the directions of the high court and briefs of every day's work and objects recovered were registered with signatures of all party representatives the excavation report comprises of two volumes with 308 pages 65 drawings and 235 photographs the gpr survey was conducted uh, at the entire disputed site and then uh, it was superimposed in uh, the plan uh, of uh, excavations the grids or the trenches which we had planned to excavate so it was superimposed in order to provide uh, further help to us contour plan of the site was also prepared and uh, the uh, the second one uh, this one is the view of the contour plan which shows the the uh, existing ruined structure um, of babri masjid the ups and downs of uh, contours etc considering the peculiar nature of site and the never before situation for excavation a deviation from the traditional method and layout planning was introduced instead of the usual 10 meter square trench divided into four quadrants by a 50 cm box a grid of trenches 5 meter squares were laid out with a 4 meter square cutting area leaving a 50 cm box all around which effectively left 1 meter wide box for the movement of men and material and parties their councils and nominees another departure affected in the layout of the trenches was the leveling the pegs initial a1 peg was fixed in the northwestern corner of grid layout as against the traditional central point method this simplified the numbering of the trenches for understanding of the court and uh, advocates and lay laymen the grid was marked a to m from west to east leaving letter i as the uh, as the marking may get confused with j we started our work on 12th march 2003 and uh, it continued for a total of 149 days closed on 7th august 2003 in which 90 trenches were excavated 35 trenches were partially and uh, excavated 
and the rest of the trenches were excavated fully or near fully. Trenches were taken up gradually as per the gra uh, gradual uh, extension of time given by the court. Trenches were excavated to varied depths depending upon the occurrence of structures and their nature and availability of sufficient space. So we started uh, our surface studies first, uh, just before excavations or uh, uh, laying out of the trenches, and found different uh, situations all around in the disputed area. And then after cleaning the site, we made the contour plans uh, and then finally started uh, excavating the site. When we started excavating the site, we had to remove the humus. And at that time, you can see in the second photograph, a number of people, including the commissioner and the district authorities, police authorities, the uh, different parties, they were all there sitting together and thinking that probably something uh, may come out today itself. So in the beginning of the excavation, we took up first the Ramchabutra area, where there uh, existed a Chabutra from at least we know about it from 18th century onwards, where uh, Lord Ram or Ram Darbar uh, was worshipped by Hindus. Uh, and it was located on the uh, southeastern corner, southeastern side of the uh, disputed structure. When we excavated the, this eastern area of Ramchabutra, we found the remains of uh, a tank-like structure and we found a square structure uh, going uh, at a depth of about uh, 1.5 1 meters down the earth. And then uh, we could identify this with what Joseph de Fentler, a European traveler had mentioned about Ramchabutra, which was seen by him in 1767, around 1767, and uh, which was exposed in the excavations in 2003. And below that, we found the uh, remains of a small tank, water tank. In the same area, we found a damaged inscription, which was located at a lower depth. It's an 11th century fragmentary inscription on a dressed stone block, uh, which was partly broken and which was lying face down. And only uh, few letters like pa, la, and na, etc. can be read on that, but the entire full legion cannot be understood because it's a fragmentary inscription. But it belongs to about 11th century and it seems that uh, it was a part of uh, some um, structure and then it was damaged and thrown in a pit. Then we also took up the western slope of uh, uh, the area. We removed the uh, debris with uh, uh, both manual and mechanical process because there were big boulders uh, and uh, 
uh, architectural members which had to be carried out uh, and uh, kept at a safer place which was provided by the local administration to ASI and uh, thus this slope area on the western side of the disputed structure was also uh, clear. Now, uh, one of the most important things which we found in the northern area, uh, when we say northern area in terms of the disputed structure or uh, the so-called Babri Masjid. So in the northern area, you can see uh, uh, the floor and on the floor there are projections. So these projections, uh, they suggest the evidence of pillar bases. Sometimes, uh, I'll show you further evidence of how the lower part of pillar base was constructed. But this is the topmost part of a pillar base over which uh, the pillars uh, must have been installed. And these are made of dressed sandstone, uh, which are resting over calcrete blocks. And the calcrete blocks are resting over brick bats. The north-south running western wall is one of the most important walls and it gives uh, the evidence of three different floors attached to it. The top part which you can see where uh, there are two courses of uh, stone blocks, uh, they are part of uh, the uh, foundation of Babri Masjid or the disputed structure and below that uh, we have the first level uh, and uh, one important thing is you can see that the uh, brick structure below the two courses of uh, stone structure, the brick structure is plastered. There was some claim that it's a, a foundation wall of the mosque, but foundation walls are never plastered. And this you can see clearly plastered. And we have evidence of four floors at this, uh, in this particular trench. So floor one and two, they, uh, one belongs to the time of uh, Babri Masjid. Floor 2 is uh, a floor in between the two levels and floor 3 and floor four, floor 4, they are definitely earlier floors than the Babri Masjid which we consider to be floors of uh, uh, the temple which existed below it, the mosque. There are some other views of uh, brick, um, brick uh, uh, pillar bases over um, brick, uh, brick bats. You can see calcrete block is placed and over calcrete block you can see the dressed stone block. Which, which So this is in fact the nature of the pillar base which is found. I'll further uh, describe about the pillar bases uh, at a little later. Interestingly, we found sometimes some skeleton or skeletal remains uh, just below the first floor in between the levels of first floor and second floor. That is to say, uh, from the ground level they are, uh, the, these uh, human skeletons, they were buried about one feet below the present day level. 
now who are these people and we started our uh, investigations and we found that there were uh, great riots in 1850 when uh, hindus and muslims both were killed and the muslims they decided to bury their dead in a hurry at the site itself along uh, the different corners when the site was attacked by uh, the hindu uh, population and these uh, about 70 of such graves were made and in history they are called ganje shahida so this this type of uh, graves were also found and we tried to uh, preserve them and uh, extend our excavations on uh, other sites avoiding those graves and because these are the graves of course they have historical importance but archaeologically they are not very important because they belong to only about 1850 or so a variety of structures uh, were laid bare at the site and these structures they belong to different periods and phases so uh, you can see the layout of trenches which is marked in uh, pink color over which different periods have been marked by different colors the green color you can see uh, they are the foundation remains of the uh, disputed structure of the babri mosque and other structures particularly the red ones are the brick uh, are the pillar bases which we found we excavated 50 of them and uh, some area restriction was there because ramlala was located so 10 meters uh, 10 feet all around the um, structure makeshift structure we are, we were not supposed to excavate so some parts were left as it is and then there were also barricades pathways for movement of uh, general worshipers so uh, we were not supposed to remove that and excavate in that area this is another view uh, of uh, which is further clearer view which uh, gives an idea how the uh, you can see about 27 uh, meters length in north south direction was Uh, of babri mosque but on either side you can see the extension of uh, the wall wall number 16 and 17 below the levels of the mosque so these uh, walls extended uh, up to uh, a length of about 60 meters in north south orientation the area on the south side of the makeshift temple and in the central part of the disputed area had yielded the most significant evidence of temple remains below the levels of the mosque in this connection a few structures require special mention here in fact in a lecture of say 30 40 minutes it's very difficult to explain all the things into details but still uh, i would like to highlight some of the important features like circular shrine it's a part of a 10th century temple which we uh, got the evidence of the circular shrine uh, towards end of our uh, 
uh, excavation work. And uh, we, uh, we were of the opinion that this circular shrine may have uh, represented one of the uh, shrines of a Panchayatan type of temple, where the central part was the uh, main um, temple, temple, maybe temple of Vishnu or Ram. And there were four subsidiary shrines all uh, on the four corners. Then wall 17 and wall 16. Wall 17 we consider to be part of an 11th, 12th century temple associated with a few exposed pillar bases. Very few uh, pillar bases were uh, connected with that, only four of them. But Wall 16 was constructed after Wall 17 and it was a part of a 12th century temple uh, which was associated with 46 pillar bases which were exposed by the excavations and uh, there were dividing walls suggesting different parts of the temple complex. Uh, because it was 60 meter uh, north south in north south uh, uh, orientation, a very huge structure. It was not a palace. It was not a public uh, uh, building of ordinary type. But the evidences show, like what we found, uh, decorative elements the lamps, etc., they suggest them to be uh, the part of a temple of North Indian style. Then walls 5 and 15, they are foundation walls of the Babri Mosque. Now, uh, they, they, these are the pictures of circular shrine or subsidiary shrine, which was part of a 10th century uh, temple. And uh, we gradually uncovered the uh, circular structure. We found, uh, you can see in the first photograph, uh, after uh, probably it was damaged or demolished. So over that, some uh, brick lining uh, work into four or five different courses they were provided. And when we removed those uh, covering structure, then we could expose the circular uh, structure, which had an entrance, which had uh, uh, just half of it was in existence and the rest of it had already been damaged and we, we, this uh, had a water chute on the northern side which uh, uh, you can see it was like something like this in the triangle you can um, see and it was located here. This is the uh, circular shrine. And this is another view of the circular shrine where you can see the water shoe. And there is an exposed uh, brick here so that water may not percolate inside the foundation of the circular um, temple and it may go further, um, a little away from the structure. This is another view uh, of the Still further views of uh, the circular shrine with, uh, with the pranal. You can see this was the pranal. It was covered with uh, uh, bricks, which uh, in due course of time, they were shifted. But it was originally covered and the uh, drain, you can see, and it was projected. 
so uh, this this is the structure this is the brain and it was projected and here you can see even the uh, drain which uh, uh, led to its uh, final uh, outlet was cut in the into a v shape uh, drain so that water may not percolate on any other side and it may go straight way uh, outside and we know very well that uh, the shiva temples in particular they have water shoot or pranal always constructed uh, with uh, with the idea that water should flow towards north Uh, these are the uh, wall 16 and the wall 17 below it with its foundation so uh, it was exposed in the um, southern area and then in the northern area also the same uh, story goes on the wall 16 runs and below that run uh, runs the wall 17 so some general views and you can see uh, the uh, cctv camera and all those things they were fixed uh, uh, to monitor the working process and this is the wall which is running uh, from south to north uh, and here you can see these this is the structure uh, of the foundation of the mosque which is uh, which was constructed overlying the earlier structure of wall 16 and wall 16 itself was on wall 17 uh there were uh, some of the trenches like j3 and g7 they were deep trenches about 40 to 42 feet in depth and you can see these uh staircases 1 2 3 4 and then six staircases of uh, say about um 4 to 5 meters each so uh, this was uh, the area which yielded the earliest remains of the site till the natural soil this is another important feature which was uh, noticed here this this stone and this is the wall which belongs to the babri mosque and uh, this feature is located here this one and this is a carved sandstone block uh which is in the shape of a makar pranal so it was uh, fixed in the temple sometimes uh in the 11th or 12th century for the outlet of water to go towards the western slope but after demolition of the temple which was whose wall was in existence here when the mosque was constructed over the temple this was also reused in the uh mosque like so many other uh reused architectural members so some more views of uh succession of floors this floor belongs to the uh mosque and then the 1 2 and 3 these floors are pre mosque floors and you can see how uh, they succeed each other with the pillar bases the partition walls of the mandap and the main wall uh, on the western side we can compare some of the uh, elements decorated elements like Uh, this patravallari uh, motif 
which is there in the wall 16, in between wall 16 and wall 17, with a similar type of uh, motifs which we find from uh, the temple which was constructed in Sarna in the same period by uh, Queen Kumar Devi, who was the uh, queen of King Govind Chandra. And in the time of Govind Chandra, uh, we have uh, before uh, the excavations when the uh, disputed structure was demolished, a huge 20 line inscription was found, which mentions that uh, uh, the feudal lords at Ayodhya, who, uh, whose sovereign ruler was Govind Chand, had constructed a temple of Vishnu Hari. And uh, the entire uh, inscribed slab describes the beauty and grandeur of that temple. There are some other decorated elements, uh, the dotted uh, uh, architectural members, which were re, uh, which were uh, used in the structures. Some more uh, lozenge shape and circular shape decorative elements of uh, structures um, which belong to the temple and which were many of which were used in the mosque also. This is another view of uh, the temple uh, broken decorated stone block uh, which was reused in the edge wall uh, provided for construction of floor related to the disputed structure and here you can see the decorated floor of the uh, disputed structure and this, uh, this also shows the Qibla uh, where people used to sit and uh, offer namaz and uh, there are different uh, floors superimposed one over the other suggesting that in a period of 300 and 400 years there were uh, uh, re, uh, they were redone another uh, element um, of uh, a pillar base which has got its comparison with the uh, pillar base of 12th century found at the monastery of uh, Kumar Devi at Sarna. So they are quite similar and they suggest that they belong to the 12th century uh, temple. This is the um, wall which which was the enclosure wall of uh, 12th century Sarna uh, Kumar Devi's uh, temple and you can also see that uh, it has got a brickwork and below the brickwork there is uh, the evidence of stonework so uh, it seems that the wall 17 at uh, Ayodhya which belongs to an earlier temple uh, was damaged and then its material was utilized for uh, reconstruction of the temple at a further large uh, scale and those elements of stone were they were utilized in the temple of uh, in the wall 16. Uh, this is uh, the photograph of the pillar base, one pillar base, uh, which are sometimes circular, sometimes square in shape. And you can see this is the wall uh, foundation of the mosque. And it is overlying uh, lying the earlier uh, pillar base. And it, this has 
damaged the pillar base which was in existence, which was first created with six or seven courses of brick bats over which the concrete blocks were fixed and over which were fixed the dressed stone blocks for fixing the pillars on them. Uh, this is a close-up view of the plaster work which, which uh, um, people had challenged in the high court that uh, this wall belongs to the uh, foundation wall of the mosque. But foundation walls, as I said, they, uh, they are never plastered and we have the remains of plaster work over here. That suggests that the uh, construction which took place over this uh, uh, brickwork was a later construction and this was an earlier construction and not just a foundation work. Now, uh, let me uh, describe some of the um, antiquities we have uh, found from period one. Uh, I'll further go into details of the uh, timing. For, uh, period one is roughly northern black polished bear period, but it starts somewhere around uh, 1680 BC or so. And northern black polished ware, uh, only two or three shirts were found. So probably it's a phase which was pre-northern black polished ware. But because a few shirts were found, we, uh, we still have to uh, consider it to be a northern black polished ware level. Uh, there was no structural activity and the reed marks on uh, the uh, mud lumps were found, which suggests a battle and dog type of structure which existed there. A significant find from the level is a round bezel in greenish glass with legend Shi Dhe, which you can clearly see in the early Brahmi characters, which normally we call uh, the Brahmi of Ashokan period, but it may be a little earlier also. She and he. There are uh, beautiful terracotta figurines um, uh, belonging to Mauryan and Shung levels. These are uh, normally uh, Mauryan levels. Then uh, we also have uh, terracotta figurines from Kushan and Gupta levels. They are both human uh, terracotta figurines as well as animal terracotta figurines. We have uh, terracotta pestles, particularly belonging to the third uh, period third, which is um, Kushan period and period four, which uh, we have the decorated um, bricks uh, belonging to most probably Gupta period. We have found a uh, number of coins, but amongst the coins, uh, we have, of course, Akbar and uh, later Mughal coins. But the most important uh, coin is this one. This is obverse, this is reverse. And on the obverse, you can see the figure, the bust of uh, a standing uh, king. And on the reverse, you can see the, this figure of Garud, which was the national emblem of the Guptas. And below that is the legend uh, Chandragupta. That means this coin belongs to Chandragupta II, Vikramaditya, and this is a copper coin. We have uh, pottery, particularly uh, very uh, significant uh, decorated redware shirts and uh, full pots of sprinkler and other types from um, Kushan and Gupta levels. We have the um, nails and other uh, um, iron objects. From period 7th and 8th, we have uh, decorated terracotta tiles. We have glazed pottery. We have uh, um, Celadon ware, 
and uh, a few porcelain pottery also like this and uh, the glaze pottery which has got both the varieties uh, where the gritty white core is there uh, in one variety and in the other variety it is terracotta core with uh, uh, glaze decorative elements on them. We have also located certain uh, architectural members like uh, the pillar pillars, uh, parts of broken pillars, and the Karna Amalak. Uh, some more architectural members and a divine couple, uh, which uh, was. Uh, which belonged to period 6 as we consider and it was very much mutilated and damaged but the two figures, seated figures can be very well seen. Uh, excavations at the disputed site of Ayodhya has yielded a continuous cultural sequence contained in the total deposition of about uh, 10.80 meters divided into nine cultural periods on the strength of combined and corroborative evidence of pottery sequence, structural remains, and other datable finds. So uh, these are the two trenches in which we uh, have divided the entire uh, periods uh, into Northern Black Polished Ware period, including the modern period, Shung, Kushan, Gupta, Post Gupta, Early Medieval or Pre Sultanat, and Medieval uh, that is Sultanat, and Mughal and Late Mughal uh, times. Now, uh, one of the most important things is the short, shorter chronology through which our country was suffering. The early association of Northern Black Polish where was suggested by John Marshall after his excavations at Gita. Uh, he suggested it to be 800 BC and later around 500 BC after he excavated that site. Many early historical sites were excavated afterwards in the middle and later half of the 20th century and some of them yielded samples which were dated and others where samples were not collected the NVPW levels were dated on relative dating and comparative studies. In this process, for nearly half a century, a generally accepted date of Northern Black Polish Bear was considered by most of the scholars to be about 600 BC to 200 BC. However, the dates from Mathura, No, Sogora, Jhusi, and Korkai, etc., still suggested dates of Northern Black Polish Ware before 600 BC from the, those sites. And the Ayodhya uh, excavations are, is important uh, in 2003 when we uh, discovered uh, uh, many dates, uh, 18 dates we uh, found from uh, the determined uh, C14 dates from uh, Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleobotany, Lucknow. And uh, roughly we say that the seven dates of Northern Black Polished Ware uh, belong to 1250 to 200 BC. However, one date, which you can see the last one from G7, uh, is datable to 1680 to 1320 BC, which gives the idea of human activity in the 17th century BCE. Now, following the Ayodhya evidence, at least nine more sites provided early dates of Northern Black Polish Ware levels in the beginning of the present century. The early dates from such levels are mentioned uh, in the chart. And they are not just dates from Indian excavations, but also G. Virardi, who did excavations in Nepal in Gotehwa, he also found the Northern Black Polished Ware levels going back to about 900 BC. There are sites, Jusi, Charda, 
अगियावीर जोफरडी गोटेवा नेपाल राजधानी कोलहुआ रामनगर कपिल वस्तु इन इंडिया दैट इज पिपरवा गनवरिया कॉम्प्लेक्स दे ऑल गिव अ डेट ऑफ प्री 600 बीसी फॉर नॉर्दर्न डेप पॉलिश वेयर कल्चर दिस इज वन शिमेटिक फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द माउंट and there are isometric views which we made of uh, the damaged or demolished structure of the mosque because we had no uh, major drawings so we depended on the evidence and then we uh, made this isometric drawings in which we superimpose the uh, pillar bases of earlier periods so uh, if you remove the uh, this part uh, of the mosque you you can see the uh, features which pre existed the mosque the, and fixing the pillars on them it looks like this there is an important uh, passage in brihat sanghita which says chatu shashti padam karyam देवायतनम सदा द्वारम च मध्यमम तस्मिन समदीक्षम प्रशस्यते दैट मींस द टेंपल साइट शुड ऑलवेज बी डिवाइडेड इनटू 64 स्क्वायर्स इट्स मेन गेट वुड बी ऑस्पिशियस इफ सिचुएटेड सेंट्रली इन वन ऑफ द फोर कार्डिनल डायरेक्शंस एंड दैट इज व्हाट वी फाइंड इन हियर वेयर बेस्ड ऑन द एनालॉजी ऑफ Rath Sangita, there are 64 squares in the temple having 84 pillar bases. The central pillar base is not there because it gives the passage to the Garbha Gri. The pillar bases at the site of Ayodhya attest to what we find from the uh, text of Rath Sangita. Now, finally. During 1528-29, Mir Baki, on orders of the Mughal Emperor Babur, constructed the mosque, which was called Babri Masjid. Below the levels of Babri Masjid, 50 pillar bases were found in excavations, which were connected with walls 16 and 17. The evidence suggests a construction and subsequent reconstruction or repairs of a temple in the late 11th or 12th century CE. an earlier temple below the levels of the uh, later one is uh, represented by a circular shrine probably part of a panchayatan temple of circa 10th century ce the excavation report is based on facts only and interpretations have been generally avoided however it seems probable that the 10th century temple was demolished in the attack of sayyid salar masood who was an army commander and nephew of mohammad ghaznavi and who uh, raided this area in the early 11th century ce soon after his attack and death a large a larger temple was constructed in the late 11th or 12th century ce in which were used the pillars of block black shish found at the site and reused in the mosque a significant outcome of the excavation was the uh, scientific dating of northern black polished ware levels which have pushed back the date to at least 5 to 6 centuries earlier than what was generally considered the challenges to the validity of excavation results were not accepted by the uh, high court or by supreme court of india and the scientific findings of asi were upheld which became the important evidence in deciding the long pending court case and this is the uh, ayodhya excavation team in 2003 in which you can see me and my uh, colleagues uh, standing and sitting thank you
thank you so uh, thank you so for the very enlightening informative and very interesting presentation today sir it is indeed an honor and pleasure for us to hear you sir uh, we have received some questions uh, from our very curious audience who were uh, live in all of the, in whole of the session if you allow me sir then we can take uh, yeah, please do. thank you sir uh, we have uh, one question from dean bandu pandey sir uh, he is asking what objects were found just above the natural soil thank you sir above the natural soil we normally uh, had very small area because it was at the depth of about uh, more than 40 feet down below so uh, naturally uh, the size uh, of the trench it decreased when we reached the next level. so we found the remains of uh, mostly the pottery and a uh, few bone points etc pottery uh, includes the uh, black and red wear black strip wear and very few shards just above the natural soil few shards of uh, northern black pottery thank you so uh thank you so much sir we have uh, so many comments and uh, feedbacks uh, for today's session uh, i think uh, uh, we had large number of audience who were live in our today's session and they have uh, they, uh, they were live in the whole of the session uh we have no more questions sir uh, so uh, at the end of this session i would like to express my vote of thanks on behalf of tet society uh let me extend my vote of thanks to everyone present here i on behalf of heritage society and its large family that includes more than 80000 of active followers from different parts of india and abroad i would like to express my profound gratitude to our distinguished speaker dr priyamani sir for his wonderful talk and presentation in our today's evening session i am extremely thankful to you sir for accepting our sincere invitation and taking out time to interact with our audience i also express my vote of thanks to all the members of heritage society uh, including our director sir our chairman sir director general sir secretary all the directors of different departments of heritage society and other staffs for organizing this enriching session i also thank our annual members fond followers and our virasat mitra of heritage society for their unconditional support and love for our endeavors besides all of them my warm heart and thanks to all of our viewers who are live today in our uh, different platforms on youtube and facebook of heritage society i thank all of you i would like also like to thank uh, dr anand astos devi sir for his support and guidance in organizing the weekly academic talk program i request all of you to stay tuned with heritage society for many more such lectures which will be coming in the coming weeks thank you to all thank you so thank you so much sir i am also honored and i thank all of